Their answer to trying solving the problem to overthrow capitalism. I'm Francesca Fiorentini, and in this episode, we're looking at the failures of profit-driven climate change solutions, and why the cooking of our planet is becoming a recipe for socialism. Now, you don't live under a capitalist system because you don't live in that of a free market economy, but you do live in a, a mixed economy. If you were to completely rid the economy, like I say, of capitalism, you will be faced with the economic calculation problem. And I don't care if I'm bored folk enough as it is. I've provided videos on the economic calculation problem on the profits and losses, and of course on the argument to do with the variety of different, you know, resources and stuff like that, and products. And central planning would be an absolute disaster, and this is exactly what they're calling it for. They would end up causing a disaster where they would overuse scarce natural resources, they would misallocate them, they would end up creating disaster like you saw in the Soviet Union. India was a country with vast arable land, it was a country with vast resources, yet what happened all thanks to socialism? They used up 70% of those natural resources, 70% of them, <laughs> waste, because by the mid 1990s, India was living in extreme poverty, so in other words, they did very little. Hong Kong, like I've reiterated so many times before, is a tiny small fishing village in about 1948, turns towards the free market, has practically no natural resources and becomes the richest city in the world. There's the difference between the efficiency of capitalism and the absolute abysmal failure of socialism. Uh, for any good discussion of neoliberalism, I'm going to start with capitalism and look at the relationship between capitalism and environmental degradation or the crises, environmental crises that we're facing today, like climate change, etc. So as I've mentioned in other videos, uh, profit is only generated in a capitalist society through exploitation, exploitation of laborers and exploitation of resources or the environment. Now those of you will remember that I've done, you know, responses to that of Mexi before, who's a Marxist. It's rather quite funny that she goes on about capitalism. Again, you can see the real agenda here. It's not really about that of the environment. Well, maybe for some people, right? To be fair to some people, but you get certain groups who the real agenda really is Marxism, to say the least. First of all, BP was a company that was over-regulated by the government. It caused a massive spill in the Gulf of Mexico. It paid for its damages. After the massive spill in the Gulf of Mexico by the state-owned oil company, the Mexican government didn't even pay for its own damages. It took no accountability for it. That's the prime example of the difference between capitalism and that of socialism. Again, her argument on profits is just laughable because she doesn't understand profits. I can go on a whole argument on that in itself. In a free market economy, the only way that you can gain a profit is by providing a service that benefits the consumer. That's not exploitation. That's called providing a service that consumers are in demand of. And fierce competition forces businesses to provide better. Because see, if you don't, your competition will wipe the floor with you. And competition will always step in and provide better than its competitor. So the consumer always wins. The consumer is king. Now what her type would try and do, she would try and conflate that of capitalism and corporatism, where you see this corporatist system of monopolies, etc. I think that, that, that the most important thing is that this is our society would live within the boundaries of what our planet can take. So we know we need to be cutting our emissions by between 8 to 10 percent a year because we've waited so long. Those numbers come from the Tyndall Center here um, in the UK, a very trusted institution. And in order to do that, we need to expand the parts of our economy that are already low carbon. We need to roll out renewable energy we need to move very, very quickly to 100% renewable energy. We know that the technology is there, the cost is getting very low. We've seen the price of, of solar drop by 80% in five years, so the technology is there. So while she spits in the face of capitalism that basically enables you to technologically advance, enables your economy to grow, she's talking about that of you know, efficiency, and basically tells people to live within their means. This is coming from the same socialists who have been profligates for decades 
on end. The same profligates who are asking for massive big welfare states, strong social security, <laughs> just everything under the sun with the high tax rates and this utopian fantasy world where we'll have 100% employment. Wells being profligates all that time, they want to tell you to live within your means. <laughs> <laughs> How can these people honestly sit there with a straight face and tell you to live within your means? And then she goes on about that of, you know, the renewable energy. Now there are articles out there, and I can show you just some for example. It would cost an absolute bomb on our economy. Again, it's that thing where they just jump two feet into something without even thinking first. They don't even seem to care about the cost. You know, never mind United States being more than $220 trillion in debt, you know, <laughs> that's not important. No, what's more important is just how we feel. See if there is a way that you could make renewable energy sustainable. I'm pretty sure the market would accept that and that's not a problem. But I remember seeing an article where a weather disaster occurred and all you saw was these solar panels that cost an absolute bomb left shattered in pieces all over the ground. Now, how much would that have actually cost? You're going to hear the argument often enough on that of the ice melting and you've probably seen this story before but have a look at this article and you can see that it contradicts their narrative and that's not because of global warming where they're trying to blame global warming and this correlates to the one that frustrates me the most. It's the one where they say that the polar bear population is in decline because of global warming or otherwise known as climate change. As you can see from the propaganda, they're spreading about the polar bear population in decline. Well, it's actually been on the increase since the 1950s and 1960s. We've seen the polar bear population rise from 5,000 to more than 25,000. Again, just like that guy, you know, never mind all the facts, don't acknowledge all the statistics, that doesn't matter. No, what matters is basically feelings over facts. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I cannot take these people seriously. So if you've got anything you would like to add yourself, see if you've got any data below, <laughs> fling it down there, do so. Do so because the fact that it upsets them so much because they think their feelings matter more than actual facts. I hope you've enjoyed the video, thank you for watching and of course I shall talk to you later. Cheers.